Hey, what's going on beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thanks for hanging out. And today I'm going to be doing a video talking about creatures who act as removal part five, I think we're on. Oh my god, part five. I will list the other four parts in the down below. But the point of this video is pretty much to talk about creatures that not only, you know, attack and block and things like that, but they also can remove something. So let's hop into it. The first creature I want to talk about is Massacre Girl. Um, fun fact, I actually 100% misread this card when it first came out, so that was super fun. I thought that it kept doing its thing, but it is only when it enters the battlefield, so don't misread it like I did. Um, so first off, she's got really nice stats. She has a 5 mana 4-4 four, four with Menace. So good. Um, when she enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each other creature other than her gets minus one minus one energy. So it's kind of like a domino type of effect with her, is that if something dies and something else dies or whatever, it just keeps going. And then she's kind of like a mini board wipe. One thing I will note about her is that she can be situational. Being that I said that, I would say she doesn't belong in every deck. I would make sure you're building her with a very specific deck in mind where you're running 1-1s one and 2-2s two and things like that so it can you can get her ability off. And then after some creatures get removed from the board, you know, uh, you're left with a 4-4 four, four with Menace. Also, it does say um, whenever a creature dies. What's really nice about that is that it's not just creatures you control. So let's just say you have a 1-1, but someone else is a 2-2. Two, two, they both get wiped, which is like really, really good. So really, really good card. Okay. The next card is um, kind of, I don't know if I'd act count as this as removal. I mean, it's on here for this reason, but it's a uh, stealing, I would say, uh, theft, which is convenient because this card is a pirate and that is Crafty Cut Purse. The name of this card is so incredibly great. I love it. Okay. It's got flash. When it enters the battlefield, each token that would be put under an opponent's control is put under your control instead. Now, um, this is not technically, I guess it is technically kind of removal because you're removing something from someone's board and then you're putting it on your board, which is really good. One thing I will note about this card, though, is it doesn't, like, this is a very specific card. So if you're in a playgroup where someone is playing tokens a lot or consistently, I think this is a really solid addition in your deck. Honestly, I just think this card is hilarious. Like, I just think this is a funny, like, haha, I got you, you thought you were going to get those tokens, but they're actually mine. So, funny card. Okay, uh, the next card that I want to talk about is High Priest of Penance. I do really enjoy this card a lot. It says whenever it's dealt damage, you may destroy target non-land permanent. Now, there are definitely some really awesome like things you could do with this card. You could make this card indestructible and then ping it, and then whenever that's dealt damage, you could destroy something. Like there's some funny sort of like combos that you can do to really, um, you know, abuse this card truthfully, but. Um, even if you don't have all of those sorts of combos and you're just running this card, I think it's a really good inclusion in Orzhov types of decks. It's also just a 2 mana 1-1, one, one, which is really nice, really cheaper sort of thing to get out in the early stages of the game, which I really enjoy. And um, I like that it says non-land permanent, so you honestly can destroy anything. I really like this card a lot. The next card that I want to talk about is kind of removal. I don't really know what I'd classify this as, but Meddling Mage. I really, really, really like Meddling Mage a lot. Um, it just says you can't play that one thing. What I really like about this card is you can be very political with this card in Commander, and you could say, hey, if I uh, name that person's Commander, will you promise not to attack me, or things like that. So I, I really like this card for that specific reason. Naming someone's Commander is probably one of my go-tos with Meddling Mage. It's probably the thing that I would to be honest, my name most likely. Um, I really like Meddling Mage a lot. She's also only two mana, which I really enjoy, and it does say non-land, so you can name things other than someone's commander if you want to, which I really like, so good card. Uh, the next card is Sour of Temptation. Uh, I guess kind of removal, it just kind of you take something, which I really like. I really enjoy Sour of Temptation. I like it a lot because it, it's, it is only creature, so you can't take other things. But honestly, what I really like about this is it is a 2-2 flyer, which is really nice. And uh, you just get to take something, which is honestly just really hilarious and really, really funny. And yeah, it's just a good card. 
Taking someone's commander with that seems like it would be really funny. Um, pretty sure someone took my commander a couple weeks ago and I was really upset. So, uh, the next card, I don't see this card played enough and I honestly can't really figure out why I really enjoy this card. Archfiend of Depravity. I really, really like this card a lot. First off, it is a 5 mana 5, five, four, five sorry, 5, 4 flyer, which is really good in and of itself. And then what it says is at the beginning of each opponent's on step, so note this is not applicable to you, that player chooses up to two creatures they control and then sacrifices the rest. This is a like immediate like, we gotta get this card off the table sort of thing. This card is so, so, so good. This truly can get rid of, um, you know, for people who have so many different creatures, it really does say, hey, you got a lot of creatures, but guess what? You can only have two of them which is incredibly good. I also like that it does say each opponent, so it does impact everyone except for you. Uh, overall, I think this card is incredibly strong. It's also a really good budget card too. Great card. Okay, the next card, this is one of those uh, staple, I would say, um, creature removal type of cards, um, and that is Kasali Pride Mage. I really like Kasali Pride Mage uh, for a couple of different reasons. It's only two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Also, it has Exalted, which is really good, so this can, you know, you can boost one of your things if you're only attacking, so it's a really good, like, early game card, but also it's a really good late game card because it has this ability to sack it and you destroy target artifact or enchantment. I like this for a lot of different reasons because... Yes, you're only targeting artifacts or enchantments, but you don't have to tap it, so you can play this card and immediately pop it off. Um, it's kind of, it's good, like, this is, this is really good, like, if you're running, like, Reclamation Sage 2, like, that card is good as well, but this card is also really strong because it does have that Exalted Trigger, you can kind of wait on this card, you don't necessarily have to just sack it right away when something is kind of really threatening, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna kind of, like, keep it on there, and honestly, people are running artifacts and enchantments like crazy in EDH, particularly artifacts. So Kasali Pride Mage, good card. Um, okay, this card is one of my favorites. This was in one of the commander sets, and I think that was it, and that is Vindictive Lich. I love this card. I think this card is like hilarious. So um, one thing I will note is that it does say player, so you might be impacted in this at all, but to be honest, you might not mind, um, especially for the first ability, which is target player sacks a creature. Sorry, I just, wait, hold up, hold up. Can someone clarify this rules for me? Because it says each mode must target a different player, but it says target opponent. But you're not an opponent, so how does that work? That's really confusing. Can someone clarify that, please? If you know how the rules of this work, because it's really weird. Um, anyways, so target opponent sacks a creature, target opponent discards two cards, or target opponent loses five life. This card with Tesa, I have this card in my Tesa, um, not Envoy of Ghosts. What's the token one? Why can't I think of her, abil her uh, the rest of her name? But um, I'll, there will be a picture on the screen so you can see it. But this with her, is this Tesa, is so incredibly good because when it dies... <laughs> You get to do these modes again and you target different people, which is so good. So you can make someone like lose five life and discard two cards, which is so good. But even if you don't have it in that taste or you don't have taste on board or anything like that, this is still a really good card because it's only a 4-1. So you can do this with Skull Clamp, which is really good, and it automatically dies. And then you get to draw two cards first off with Skull Clamp. And then on top of that, you get to like do all these different abilities. This card is really, really good. I like it a lot. Um, okay, this is not necessarily a, I guess this is more of like a death and taxes type of card, but I still thought that it fit the bill for kind of a removal because it's kind of making it so a lot of your opponent's things can't really be cast, and that is Hushbringer. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this art extremely irritates me, and I think that's the only reason that I don't run this in my Alila deck, because I hate the art of this card so much. I think it's abysmal. Uh, I just... I, I don't know what it is, but it really bothers me. Anyways, it is a 2 mana, 1, 2 with flying and lifelink, which is really good. And it just says creatures entering the battlefield or dying. Don't cause things to trigger. Or dying. I think that's the really, really important thing in this, is that it, it impacts or dying as well, So, which is really, really good. Um, I feel like this does a lot of different things, and to be honest, I'm kind of shook that it does this many things. Because if it just said just at entering the battlefield, it would have been, like, great, but, like, or dying as well as, like, two different things that it's hitting, um, and it says no to triggered abilities, which is really good, so, good card. 
And the last card, this is one of my like personal favorites. I really, really enjoy this card, and that is Ashen Rider. Ashen Rider is a lot of mana, and I know, but I really like this card nonetheless because it says enters the battlefield or dies. You get to exile target permanent, permanent, permanent. It does not have to be a creature, it can be anything you want it to. There's a really threatening land, boom, it's exiled. And like, this is just so good. If you have Tesa as well, I run Tesa too, which is why I'm talking about it. You get double, uh, double exile triggers, which is so 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 good. Uh, it's also got a five five flying. It is a lot of mana to be honest. It is nine mana to do these things, but I honestly think for what you're getting out of this is just so incredibly good. So, I really like this card. So, yeah, guys, that is it for talking about uh, creatures who act as removal. I hope you guys like this. Definitely check out my other videos in the down bar below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye. Thank you.